going on Facebook? Good afternoon, good afternoon. Just want to share on this afternoon. See who wants to jump on for a few minutes. Just want to encourage some people in, in the faith. Give it a few minutes, see if some people jump on real quick. Um, just spending some time with the Lord and want to just share something that the Lord laid on my heart. I thought it would be fitting, yet encouraging um, to encourage believers. I'm going to give it a few minutes, then I'm going to say what I'm going to say as I always do, and then I'm just going to roll out. Man, just going to give it a few more minutes. So we got one person jumped on. Feel free to share. Just want to talk from this thought, just to encourage um, the believers. I'm always trying to find ways, as the Lord puts on my heart, to encourage the believer. To encourage people as well, but you know, encourage those who are in ministry and encourage those in the faith. My heart for the unbeliever is that you accept Christ as your personal Savior. Listen, he's transformed my life, and I know... If you accept Christ, he will transform yours. And I know it's so much misconception about believing in God and accepting Christ, but you need to find out for yourself. You need to find out for yourself. So I'll give it a few more seconds. Everybody that knows me knows I'm not going to wait to get 100 people. Or, as a matter of fact, I ain't going to wait for 10 people. Ten people, five people, ten people. If you're going to jump on, jump on. Everybody has a busy schedule. What I want to talk about in, in briefing, um, as I was just meditating on some scripture and um, spending time with the Lord, I thought this was a fitting. I share a lot of things that, that the Lord may put on my heart on Facebook, not for boasting or bragging, but I share it to really encourage the body sometimes to to rethink some things or reevaluate some things um why you do what you do you know every day um i reevaluate myself why am i doing ministry am i really called to ministry if i am then what is my focus point and i and i do this to keep me sharp um to make sure that my motives are pure in what i'm doing because along the way um as you do ministry what happens is your motives, if you don't watch, will begin to change. Um, depending upon how your ministry is growing, um, what God has called you to, if you don't watch, sometimes your motives in doing ministry may start off pure, may start off with the right intentions. Um, but what happens is if you don't watch because of the hype of ministry, the hype of church, the growth, the opportunities, if you don't watch, um, you can be in ministry for the wrong reason. Now, the call of God was pure. How you started was pure. Uh, motives are pure. But what could happen is, over the course of time, because of the hype and the opportunities and all that's happening, um, you can get caught up and then your motives and the, and, and the reason why you're doing ministry or, or doing something, period, that has a good cause could change. And so I wanted to bring this text out. And for those who don't read their read the Bible or read scripture or whatever the case is, and for those who do read the Bible, you can also turn to it if you want or read it in your spare time. But it's in um, Luke, uh, the 10th chapter. And it's a very short text um, from verses 38 through 42. And it deals with um, Martha and Mary. I just wanted to kind of share some more about this. I shared a Facebook post, and like I said, I wasn't doing it for attention, but I, I did it to um, encourage people in the faith to, to reevaluate, to rethink, you know, why do I do what I do? And um, just to talk about these two ladies in the scripture, you know, what Martha was doing wasn't even bad. That's just what she normally did. She took care of the house and um, if she was a wife, she was a good housewife. If she was a maid, um, 
She was a good maid, whatever the case was. So what she was doing was not a bad thing. She even received, she has great hospi um, hospitality. She received Jesus at the door, all that good stuff. Um, so you see she's hospitable. Um, you see she's a hard worker. She's, you see that she's, um, she's a good cleaner, whatever the case is. She knows how to keep a house. Um, but sometimes what I find out is we just get used to being busy. We just get used to being busy. And sometimes we think being busy oftentimes is kingdom. Or we think being busy is is, is big time ministry. And because you're you're just busy. And and that's what what was going on with Martha. She had company and she's so focused on hospitality that she was really missing um taking the time out and and, and, and really enjoying her company. But that's what happens to us sometimes. Um, we get in ministry or, or, or maybe God has called us to do a work or whatever the case is. And instead of actually doing ministry, we just get caught in just doing busyness. And what happens is um, what seems to be so good in her intentions, what Martha was doing was, was, was good stuff. That's just what she does. But it was the time of what she was doing. You know, it wasn't a time to be busy, but she was so used to being busy and, and doing things she didn't know how to rest her mind and see if it was something else that she could be doing or should be doing. And there's a difference, as I shared in my post, of just being busy and actually doing what the Lord has put on your heart to do. Sometimes we think being busy is what the Lord wants us to do, and that's not always the case. Busy, yeah. You know, what an idle mind is a devil's workshop. I think I've heard that, and I probably need to re uh research that as far as scripture but having an idle mind period of course is not a good thing and then sometimes being busy oftentimes is not a good thing because the enemy sometimes wants you to be so busy that you're not praying you're really not spending time with the lord you're really not doing the things that you're supposed to do so where am i going with this is that Mar martha was so busy she was so caught up in her normal routine she was so caught up with her everyday life, what she normally does on a daily basis, that what seems to be so hospitable, you know, she wasn't as hospitable as she needed to be. In other words, she was so busy that she really couldn't entertain or serve her guests. And mind you, her guest was Jesus. And so what happens is, as she's stuck in her busyness, She's so caught up in her busyness and Jesus recognizes her. Sometimes we're busy or we're doing so many different things or we want to be found in so many different places. It's because we want people to see us so busy. You know, when I started the prayer downtown, it was something I had to seek the Lord about to make sure that one, my motives and my heart was right and my intentions. Um, was I actually doing this so I can be seen? Was I actually doing this so I could be recognized? What is the reason why I'm doing this? Well, as I continue to pray and seek the face of God, I found out it was a need. Not as if others are not praying downtown, but the ministry of praying and serving downtown or wherever we may pray and serve, it was needed. And so there's a difference of me just being busy, wanting to do things like Martha to be recognized or rewarded. You know, she wanted to get Jesus's attention. She got it. And Jesus said, listen, Martha, you worry about so much stuff. Why are you so caught up in all that you're doing right now? All that you're doing is not even necessary, Martha. Why are you so caught up in all this? And this is what happens to us sometimes. What starts off as so good and so pure that if we don't watch, um, our motives and the reason why we do things, we could be doing things for the wrong reason. And so what Martha was doing, once again, was, was not bad at all. She was a good housewife or a woman that took care of the house. She, you know, that was something good. But the scripture says that Mary found that good portion. In other words, Mary was right where Jesus needed her to be. That's where her heart was. It wasn't that Mary is a lazy person. It wasn't that Mary didn't know how to keep a house. It wasn't that Mary wasn't even hospitable.
But it's a different from being busy and being where the Lord needs you. Two different concepts. Okay. And so my post really wasn't deep. It was just to get you to reevaluate. Why do I do what I do? Am I doing it to be recognized? Am I doing it for reward? Have my motives changed the reason why I do ministry? Have my motives changed the reason why I started this business? Have my motives changed in why you do what you do? You do it every day, but why do you do it? Question yourself. Is what I'm doing, is this what the Lord wants me to do? Or am I doing it because I'm trying to fit in? Or am I doing it because I want the community to see? So you have to begin to reevaluate and check your motives. Once again, I to open up and said for those who are tuning in, I reevaluate my purpose. I reevaluate my motives each and every day. Because if, if God has called me to do a work, then my motives have to be pure in the work that I'm doing. But if I have alternative thoughts, alternative motives, why I'm doing what I'm doing, it's going to it's going to hinder or going to taint the pureness of what God is calling me to do. So Martha, all this busyness, but Jesus said himself, he says, Mary has found that good portion. Mary was actually where Jesus needed her to be. In other words, or Mary was right where she needed to be. She was sitting at Jesus's feet. And so my question to you or my encouragement to you, I say it this way, is to find out where God needs you to be. What ministry do he need you to connect to? What ministry does he need you to do? Find where God wants you to be rather than just be busy in a whole bunch of stuff for people to say, man, you busy. You always grinding. You always, you always, you always. Why not be where God wants you to be? The struggle with being where God wants you to be is sometimes when you, be where, when you are where, where God wants you to be, man will miss it. When you're doing the work of the Lord, what happens is man misses it. Why does man miss it? Because man questioned you. Why are you doing this? Who told you to do this? Man misses why God put on your heart to do it. Now you understand I'm right where God wants me to be. I'm right where God needs me to be. And God is being glorified because you're obeying the instruction of the Lord. But whenever you're right where God wants you to be, Oftentimes, man will miss it. When you're caught up in busyness, man will recognize it, but God may not be glorified in it. Listen to that. In all your busyness, man will recognize it, but God may not be glorified because if you're not where he needs you to be, it could be a missed assignment. If you're not where, you, where, where God needs you to be. It could be an opportunity where God is looking to be glorified through you. And because you're not there or you're not doing it, God can't get the glory. So the focus of all that I'm saying is let's learn to be, let's seek the face of God and learn to be where God needs us to be or desires us to be. Not get so caught up in so much busyness. Okay, because busyness does not always mean that I'm doing kingdom work. Okay. Business that you're doing could be a good thing, all right? So it's not saying it's not a good thing. But sometimes you can get so caught up in being busy that you miss that good portion. You miss where you need to be or you miss where you're supposed to be. So listen, if this short video encouraged you, you could definitely read uh, St. Luke the 10th chapter, verses 38 through 42. And, you, and it has this short reading about uh, Martha and Mary. But I wanted to share that to just reevaluate. Why you do what you do, even the job you work. You know, some of us still work for companies and jobs. Why am I here? Did God send me here or am I here because I want to make money? You know, God can send you in a place and you can make money and God can still be glorified. But you have to be ready to go where, when the Lord sends you. Sometimes God will send us to a place just to be a light, just to be a witness. He may not send you to prophesy. He may not send you to preach. He may just send you to be a light to be an example, to reflect him, because there is somebody in that place that is full of darkness, or maybe the place you're working at is full of darkness. So God said, listen, I'm strategically sending you there just to be a light, because you need to shed light in this dark place. And then who knows what would happen if you're where God needs you to be, 
rather than get so caught up in so much busyness and miss where God is calling you to or where he needs you to be. So listen, feel free to share this video. I'm going to definitely upload this on my YouTube vid, uh, YouTube um, page. I'm going to definitely share that link for those who may see this video. Um, I'm encouraging you to subscribe. Simple subscription. All you got to do is uh, click on that link. And I'm going to share that right after this video. Just click on that link and hit subscribe. And you'll be able to follow all of our Bible studies, all of our spiritual inspiration, all of our worship services, and anything else that we have going on. You'll be able to follow that on my YouTube link, my YouTube page. So I definitely encourage you, especially if you get tired of watching worship services on uh, Facebook, de definitely you can watch our worship service on YouTube. So I pray that this short video once again has encouraged you and uplifted you and gave you to look at life from a different perspective and um, to get you to reevaluate why you do what you do. Is it for the kingdom or are you doing it because you want man to recognize you? So always remember some of the things that you're doing, man may see it, but God may not be glorified. So just think about that and reevaluate.